Hello, everyone. My name is Michael Steinhardt. I'm the technology editor here at CBS Interactive, and we're very proud to present the Insider's Guide to Evaluating Hybrid Cloud Backup Appliances. This is a live and interactive webcast sponsored by Unitrends, where we're talking about leveraging the latest cloud and on-premises technologies to ensure backup and recovery. Because whatever you want to call it, resilience, reliability, availability, uptime, it's absolutely critical for companies that are operating in today's 24-7, 365 marketplace. It's affordable and attainable now that we're in the cloud age, and to do business without it is really risking disaster. In order to do this, we have a fantastic lineup of speakers today. We're proud to welcome Jerome Wendt and Mike DiMeglio. Now, let me just tell you a little bit about our speakers. Jerome Wendt is the lead analyst and president of DCIG, which is a technology analyst firm that focuses on enterprise data storage and data protection technologies. Prior to founding DCIG, Jerome served in a variety of roles ranging from systems manager to storage engineer. He's contributed and written articles to numerous publications, including Computer World, Storage Magazine, and the Tech Target family of websites as well. Now, Mike DiMeglio is Director of Product Marketing at Unitrends. He has over 25 years of sales and marketing experience with startup, emerging, and large corporations. And before joining Unitrends, his extensive experience included product planning, portfolio strategy, product marketing, and revenue generation at companies such as Datacore Software, Falcon Store Software, NetApp, and Adaptech. So Jerome is going to provide us with some industry insight and perspective, and Mike is going to explain how Unitrend solutions meet these needs. And before we start, I just want to go over two very quick housekeeping points. Uh, first and foremost, our presentation is interactive, so please feel free to submit questions using the Q&A widget, which I believe is to the left of your viewing console. And we're going to do our best to answer as many of those questions as we can during a Q&A portion set aside at the end of the presentation. Just in case we don't get a chance to answer your questions live, we'll definitely respond via email. So don't hesitate to send in those questions as we go. And if you'd like more information about Unitrends or you'd like to download the slides for today's presentation, you can refer to the Related Resources widget, which should be to the right of your viewing console. With that, I'll turn things over to Jerome. Thank you so much, Michael. I appreciate that uh, very nice introduction. I'd like to welcome everyone to today's webinar. Thank you for taking time out of your uh, schedule. I know everyone's really busy out there, and uh, hopefully we'll give you some good information you can uh, use take back with you. Uh, as Michael said, my name is Jerome Went. I am the lead analyst and president of DCIG, a technology analyst firm. Uh, much of the, what we're going to talk about today is derived from the various buyer's guides that DCIG produces. Uh, we're going to specifically uh, take a look at the re you know, some of the data from our recent uh, recently published Hybrid Cloud Backup Appliance Buyer's Guide, and look at some of the results in that, and you know, just sort of draw some conclusions from that and really how it relates to uh, application and data recovery and how organizations can leverage these appliances to achieve those objectives. So one of the first things I want to take a look at is just why there is an increased interest in recovery. Uh, one of the uh, big you know, for so many years, I think organizations have just, you know, simply struggled with backups, just getting successful backups done, whether, and then, you know, if they didn't complete, you end up spending time troubleshooting it, figuring out, you know, why the tape drives weren't working, uh, why the backups failed. Uh, you know, there are just all sorts of hassles around backup. From the end users I'm talking to and the surveys DCIG has done, we're really seeing, we've really seen a shift really in the last couple of years that as organizations have adopted, you know, modern technology such as, you know, improved or modern backup software as they've Im implemented disk in the backup process. We've really seen you know, finally backups finally are working, where we're really starting to see success rates of really 98% or higher. Um, another, inter another reason, so this has allowed companies to start shifting their, their attention to recovery. What, and as a result of this, organizations are like, okay, now that disk is so much more affordable than it's in the past, they can actually, you know, realistically and financially afford and actually start repurposing some of this data and some of this excess capacity for recovery uh, to you know, fully recover applications either you know, on-premise or off-premise or even in the cloud. Uh, and they're doing this for numerous reasons. I mean, they want to, you know, really it's, it's about availability. I mean, they, wanna, you know, they want the same sort of experience for their enterprise applications as many of us now get for our consumer applications where we just expect really our applications to be available all the time or have you know, relatively short paths to recovery. And so now they want that immediate access to applications or near, you know, near real-time recovery. So we're starting to see, you know, more uh, vendors and solutions out there provide that sort of immediate and faster recoveries. 
And as they do that, now they're also thinking about, okay, now that we recover our data, you know, and suppose we do have a disaster, you know, we want to be able to have the flexibility to recover in the cloud or fail back so they can, you know, the, not only do they want to provide that same experience to their own internal users, but also to their clients if they're, you know, hosting providers or whatnot. So they don't see any interruption in service. So how do they, you know, how do they go down that path? And then as well as they, and there's also, you know, just the practical day-to-day -day requirements as far as doing, you know, patches or upgrades uh, or fixes to their existing operating systems or applications. How do we can how can we you know, model those before we actually have to do them on our production machines? Uh, with by having data available in real time, you know, or at least having copies of data, using your backup copies, applying patches or fixes or upgrades to them, you can kind of model that, see what it's like uh, before you do it on the production machine. Just you know, just so you can do a dry run at it, and you're not going in cold turkey when you actually start applying those patches in real time. And then, you know, and this all contributes to just lowering overall costs of doing business. I mean, you don't have to have people dedicated to backup. You don't have to, you know, it, it, you don't necessarily have to have archives, stagnant copies of backup data. Now it becomes sort of a viable part of your business process and you improve the overall value to the business. So, you know, these are all the reasons people are looking more and more at recovery. And then when you, and then you start looking beyond, you know, just, you know, doing local or remote recoveries, but actually doing recovery in the cloud. Um, you know, in the re some recent surveys, um, you know, it, small businesses, and I say, you know, small mid-sized businesses, let's just say 500 people or less, or maybe less than 20 terabytes of data, they're already using cloud back, you know, big cloud-based backup and recovery in the sense that they're already using a, a public cloud storage provider. Uh, they're using that as a target for their backups. Uh, when asked about, you know, they they, are, they see the value in this. I mean, even if they're not using using it right now, they see the value in it. I mean, they don't have to have their own backup targets. They don't have to have a secondary site. They can, you know, really they have access to, you know, what is essentially an infinite amount of capacity. I mean, I know it's somewhat of an illusion, but, I mean, at least they don't have to always be thinking about how we upgrade our own internal capacity. They can sort of offload all those management tasks and detail off to a cloud provider so they can do do that. And even if they're not using a cloud, but they maybe have a secondary site right now, uh, you know, three quarters of them are really looking to use uh, the, um, you know, of those that have a non-based or non-cloud-based secondary site, the majority of them, or like 79% of them, want to use the cloud or really would like to get out of, you know, hosting their own site and really move in into the cloud and use that as a target, not just for backup, but also for recovery as well. So organizations get it. Um, they see the value of it. But how they execute upon it, um, and as they continue, you know, they evaluate the cloud, and you know, what, how do they get in the cloud, and how easy it is. Well, as our recent buyers guys illustrated, we identified there's over 60 different hybrid uh, cloud backup appliances in the market that are appropriate from SMB up to enterprise class that all offer connectivity to various public cloud storage providers, and even if you're not, even if you just want to look at backup software itself, apart from the appliance, where you know where the backup software is available just as a software-only solution, half of those provide uh, cloud, some sort of public cloud storage connectivity. So there's definitely uh, there's definitely options available for people out there for all size organizations, regardless of the size. Now the reason we DCIG focuses in specifically on you know uh, uh, appliances is that they you know they just provide you know they sort of provide that turnkey fast and easy way you can basically bring one on site and connect to it. And you know, and with the fact that they give they give the organizations a lot of flexibility to connect to the cloud, but they do so quickly and easily. And what we're seeing now is because of all these new options available, because it's becoming so much easier to connect to the cloud, the vast majority of businesses, you know, based upon recent surveys that we've looked at just for our own internal research, you know, at least 90% of organizations out there are looking at, you know, bringing the cloud into their business as a, as a you know, minimally as a target for backup, but also for using some form of recovery. But that really begins to beg the question, you know, just because you can connect to the cloud, how easy is it really to do recovery? I mean, for instance, I mean, okay, you can store data in the cloud, but how easy is it to manage it once you have it out there? And how many options do you have to, you know, what cloud, what public cloud storage options do you have available to you? Uh, and then even once you get it out there, how easy is it to recover the data? Uh, that's, you know, that's a totally different question in terms of, I mean, are you looking to recover it uh, locally? Are you looking to recover it at a secondary site? Are you looking to recover it in the cloud? Are you looking at some combination of the, you know, of all three of those for your particular business? 
And then if you are, you know, depending on what combination, maybe just one of them or all of them, uh, how quickly can these recoveries occur? I mean, just because you can recover in the cloud doesn't mean you can do it quickly or easily or manage it. So then the question is, you know, what sort of solutions are available to you to really orchestrate this management and, uh, you know, perform the backups of the cloud, then recover locally or remotely or in the cloud? Uh, these are some really tough questions that organizations need to answer even before they really get seriously about, you know, get serious about going down this path. So we're going to look at today, uh, we're going to look at some of the research DCIG has done in this area to you know, examine some current trends in application and data recovery and how you can use hybrid cloud appliances to achieve some of those objectives. So we're going to look at, you know, we're going to talk a little back into the cloud and what's going on in that space and how, uh, what options are available to you. We're going to talk about appliance space recoveries. You know, what, what are some positive trends occurring there? What's some things you need to be a little bit cautious about and, you know, proceed with some, uh, you know, be a little bit wary in that area. Uh, same thing with cloud-based recoveries. What are some things you need to think about when you start looking at cloud-based recoveries? And finally, we're going to talk about the importance of, uh, you know, why having a single management council is really starting to gain an importance with organizations if, as they look to begin to do uh, orchestration of both backup and recovery from a single portal. So let's first talk about backup to the cloud. Um, so really a very simple definition uh, from DCIG's perspective. It's basically the ability to do a backup to a third-party cloud provider with the flexibility to recover applications and our data either locally or with the cloud provider. So when we looked at the uh, various backup hybrid cloud backup appliances in the market space, we just sort of, you know, when you look at the, the 60 plus appliances out there, uh, I think when, when one thing that really jumped out to us is just the number of them that are relying upon a proprietary uh, cloud backup providers. Uh, where, you know, it's not a name brand like, you know, say Am or something more commonly well-known like Amazon or Azure or Rackspace that you may, you know, hear a lot about the news. I mean, the vast majority of them are actually using proprietary cloud service providers to provide cloud cloud backup uh, services. And I think that's for a number of reasons. Why, well, theoretically, you can use, um, and realistically, you can use many of these uh, or any of these to uh, back up to the cloud, and, there, you know, there's, and some offer various combinations as far as which ones you can connect to. What DCIG sees, or at least when we, we look at these, we talk to different providers and you know end users about wh why their, why proprietary cloud is still kind of leading the pack in terms of the preferred or the most commonly supported method, methodology for connectivity. It's just the fact that they offer some of the you know the recovery services, the orchestration, even the technical skills that they have. Those skills are more are more readily available to end users who are looking to recover in the cloud. And I think it also goes back to the fact that, you know, organizations that are implementing, you know, cloud-based recovery are often small and mid-sized businesses. They're smaller organizations, so they need a little bit more hand-holding at this point. They haven't got the staff to actually, you know, do the orchestration and management. So that's the reason, I think, right now while we're seeing uh, the proprietary cloud providers uh, that are, uh, you know, that are, you, you know, regional or, you know, very, you know, localized that are providing these sort of services right now. Now, you know, we kind of expect that to change going forward, but that's just, you know, kind of the state of the market right now. But I think what this should tell us, too, is just because you can back up to Microsoft Azure or Amazon, that it doesn't necessarily mean you can be able to recover in the cloud. Um, now, what you will find is that, you know, a number of providers do, or a number of hybrid cloud backup appliances do connect to multiple cloud providers. But to do so, they often have to, you know, there's different underlying technologies and uh, to connect to each one. And as such, you know, they, they have to make sure they have those hooks in place to store data out there, to pull data back. Um, and when you look at, start talking about, you know, we start, okay, okay, now i got to land this particular cloud. How do I actually do recoveries? Well, often you may still have to do the recovery at your site. Uh, and then, you know, how easy it is to do that recovery. Uh, that's going to, you know, that, again, that's, I think part of the reason we're seeing these proprietary cloud providers because they're going to provide that expertise, that uh, that knowledge you need to actually facilitate those recoveries. Again, if you're going to do it in the cloud, great. But if you want to do it locally, or uh, if you want to do it back at your own site, then they may you know, provide. You know, how do they get that data back to you? Are you going to recover it back over your WAN link? Are they going to send you a you know a disk drive or a, you know a tape or a tape cartridge just so you can do the recovery? I mean, these are all the things they're going to probably talk through with you and sort of help you step through this process. Now, if they do you know, offer some sort of cloud-based recovery, then, again, we're going to see some options vary by, you know, by cloud provider in terms of, you know, is it 
just, you know, can you just bring up a single machine? Can you bring up your whole environment? There's going to be different options that they're going to make available and more than likely they're going to charge you for as well. So just some, you know, we start thinking about backup of cloud. These are just some general observations that we've had. Um, it is achievable for, you know, just as far as getting data in the cloud and storing in the cloud, it's achievable for almost any size organization. I mean, there, there's products out there, both backup appliances as well as backup software that will give you that flexibility. However, when you start start talking about, you know, doing recoveries, and we'll get into this a little bit, whether it's on appliance or on, or in the cloud, they just get more complicated to achieve. There's going to be some orchestration, some technical skills, probably some configuration to make that happen. In other words, it's just not a turnkey solution at this point for the most part. I mean, there might be some very limited turnkey abilities, but as far as doing uh, multiple applications at the same time, uh, it's, it's, you just can't flip a switch. I mean, don't expect to flip a switch and expect it to work. Um, but that said, DCIG is definitely sensitive in our conversations with the different providers who put out these appliances. They are working really hard to start to make this a reality because I think they all sense that's going to be their big differentiator going forward. And now they're starting to give their full attention to that to really start, you know, to make it more and more turnkey. And while, I mean, it's going to take a number of years for this to occur, uh, it really bears, you know, watching, you know, and working closely with your, with your providers to see what sort of progress they're making there and take advantage of these features. Because, we, again, we are seeing a lot of progress in this area. Um, and the reason we kind of recommend hybrid cloud backup appliances at this point is that we really feel that they give organizations, you know, their best opportunity to succeed in the near term with either local or cloud-based recovery, just because, again, their, their focus is on providing connectivity to the cloud. They are trying, you know, they are giving organizations new options to do recovery even on the appliance itself or in the cloud, maybe on the appliance out there. So, again, we'll get into that here in just a moment. So the next thing we're talking about here is appliance-based recoveries. And uh, let's just provide a short definition of that, which is really where we, we uh, define an appliance-based recovery is using the backup appliance itself to facilitate, host, and accelerate an on-premise ap application or data recovery uh, at local or remote sites. So when I say local or remote sites, that might be uh, you know on your own site where you're using the appliance to do the recovery, or you may have the, the appliance at a secondary site that you own or even in the cloud or with your cloud provider where you can actually bring uh, the app, potentially even bring the application up on the appliance itself that you own and that is placed there. Part of the reason organizations are exploring this or at least contemplating using appliances and, you know, to do some level of application data recovery is that, you know, during the day these appliances often are idle or only marginally used during off-peak uh, backup hours. In other words, you know, the, the usage rate is under, you know, 10 or 15 percent CPU utilization and whatnot. Whereas at night, they obviously go much higher when the backups are occurring. So you can potentially use these appliances during the day as additional resource to perform, you know, recoveries and at least test the recoveries or test the appliances or test the application or data recoveries uh, on the appliance as a means to, you know, just see how well it works or do some of the other testing. Um, it also, it's, it's a, again, it's a resource that you can use. Uh, there's available resources on the appliances during between these backup windows that, you know, may give you some opportunity to do that. So when we start looking at, you know, when we start looking at what sort of, uh, what sort of options are available to you as far as doing recoveries, uh, I looked at four different areas as far as uh, how to do uh, uh, virtual machine local recoveries. Like now, the first one that we're looking at there is uh, uh, VMware Instant Recovery. Now those, uh, that so basically that facilitates recovering to the, to the, uh, you know, the actual ESX or Hyper-V server. We actually recover the. Uh, uh, the application or data back to it. So the vast majority of them, I think, was like 90% of them there. So support that sort of functionality. But now when you start getting into, okay, what about, um, you know, actually doing a recovery on the appliance itself? Well, there's, there's, you can see the numbers fall off pretty quickly. It drops down to almost only about half of those hybrid cloud backup appliances provide any sort of uh, flexibility to actually recover uh, applications um, on v as VMs on the on the uh, actual appliance itself. So if this is going to be important to you, if you're looking to do appliance-based recoveries, you should be aware that really only about half of these appliances in the marketplace actually you know, provide this sort of functionality. And then the reason I bring up, like I mentioned, virtual appliances and to be able to, to host backup software on the appliance uh, in a VM is that one of, the, one of the things we find kind of curious is that many of these back, uh, almost all backup software now supports uh, uh, VMware, uh, ESX or ESXi, Hyper-V, they, they provide, you know, they protect these and they provide some very robust functionality. But when it comes to them actually being virtualization friendly, 
we find that many of them you know, cannot run inside uh, in, individual guest OSs, that they actually have to have their own dedicated uh, appliance or server on which to run. And then when you start even looking a little bit further, like, can they be deployed as a virtual appliance so you can put them in the, uh, like a, a smaller shop where you don't have maybe 10 or 15 VMs running and you want to deploy the uh, backup software as a virtual appliance out there. Many of them, only about, again, only about half of them offer that as an option. Otherwise, you have to uh, actually, I mean, if you're going to use that software to back it up or back up that small environment, you have to deploy appliance there instead of making it available as a virtual appliance. So, again, these are things you just want to, as you start looking at appliance-based recoveries and what, and how easy it is to even get these appliances out there or what options, what flexibility they give you, there's quite a bit of diversity and, you know, some fact-checking you have to do before you can start rolling these out. So some prerequisites if you're going to look, if you're looking to use the appliance as a, as a, as a means to do, you know, application data recoveries. Well, first off, you have to, you know, verify that there's uh, unused capacity on the appliance that may be dedicated and used for recoveries for extended periods of time. And looking at some of these appliances, uh, some of them actually dedicate all the available capacity to the backup software. So you can't even, you know, partition it out or reallocate it for, uh, to host other applications. So that's one thing you, ca you need to look at. I mean, is, is that even an option on the appliance to do the recovery? And, if, and how much available capacity they have to, to do that? Um, and then if you're also going to look at it, you're, you're more than likely going to want, want to run the um, application in its own virtual machine. So you need to verify that the appliance does support the creation of VMs on the appliance, and it does support the recovery uh, of virtual machine appliances on the, um, or virtual machine recoveries on the appliance itself. So a few observations. Um, Again, don't assume that the unused appliance capacity is, you know, is automatically free to be dedicated to the application recovery. Uh, some, again, some do not, some appliances do not give you that flexibility or allow you to do that. Uh, hypervisor support on the appliance is a prerequisite for appliance-based application recoveries. And I say that only in the, in the context that uh, organizations are likely going to want to bring up applications in their own in their own virtual machine. So, uh, I mean, there might be rare instances where you don't want to do that, but I would see that as a, you know, pretty much preferred way to, to go forward and do that. Um, as you start looking at bringing up these uh, VMs on the back of appliance, however, just be aware that the VM licensing options on them vary. Uh, some may not, uh, some, in some cases you may have to purchase additional licensing or per, uh, hypervisor licenses to actually bring up VMs on there. In other cases, there may, you know, there may just be a limited number of VMs that you can run. I mean, I've seen some that only allow you to run two, maybe four VMs on the appliance. Uh, so again, make sure that the licensing requirements align with your actual or their licensing, what the licensing permissions are aligned with your actual requirements. And then finally, you should be aware that the performance of recovered applications running on an appliance will likely be diminished versus what you're going to get in, in production. Um, uh, when we look at a lot of these appliances, while there is some, you know, flash or SSD on these, that is often consumed or often used by the backup software, often to do, you know, to store their uh, metadata for the deduplicated uh, environment, so that's often reserved strictly for the backup software. So you're going to be basically forced to run the application on, uh, you know, disks that are running at 7.2, you know, 7.2k RPM or 10k RPM hard drive. So uh, again, you're not going to get you won't get horrible performance, but you're probably not going to get great performance either. And then if you're going to expect, expect to run these at the same time that the backup software is running backup jobs at night, you can certainly uh, you know, be prepared for degraded performance during those periods of time. So let's talk a little about cloud-based recoveries. Uh, you know, I think this is kind of the holy grail. Oops, I jumped one too far here. Um, let me move right here. So when we talk about cloud-based recoveries, um, this is where we really start talking about, you know, the process of facilitating, hosting, accelerating cloud-based application or data recoveries with the cloud storage provider. Um, and Again, I think this is what kind of gets a lot of people really excited. Say, hey, uh, you know, we don't have to build our own facility anymore. It's, uh, uh, you know, we can rent it as we need it. We can spin stuff up. We can shut it down. Uh, and, and that's, you know, that's all great and good. And those are absolutely, you know, it's absolutely what uh, the cloud holds and where it's going. Um, and it also, you know, provides, the, you know, for increased application data mobility, availability, all the things that, you know, get, a, get everyone's heart pumping when they start thinking about, uh, you know, using the cloud. But um, some things to be aware of. I mean, and not every place is a cloud storage provider also a service provider. So just because you can use the, the cloud storage provider as a backup target doesn't necessarily mean they're going to 
uh, they facilitate uh, bringing the, the applications or making the applications or data available in the cloud for you. So you have to be, uh, you know, make sure that you, know, you can check off those boxes. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, and do you have to buy that on a dedicated basis? Can you buy it? And if they do offer it, how do they make it available? Do they have to, you have to buy a, you know, a, certain, or a certain amount of capacity or CPU cycles? And have to you know, sort of pay a monthly fee for that, or can you kind of spin it up or spin it down as you need it? Um, in some cases, if you're using appliances, uh, do you need to have a physical or virtual instance of that of your own appliance, or you have to purchase that and put that with the cloud provider? And do they even allow for that? Uh, so you can rep. And, and by mean that, I mean if you're going to try to replicate data out there or bring up uh, potentially bring up a VM on your appliance out there, uh, do they permit that? How easy is it to accomplish that, and can you manage that? If you're going to try to actually bring up applications, you know, potentially bring up a production application either on the appliance that you have with the cloud provider or on their own stuff, uh, how much bandwidth are you going to need to to do that in terms of communicating from your site to that? I mean, or it doesn't matter. So those are, you have to actually look at you know, what your bandwidth requirements are to bring that up. And then one of the things that you know we really see is you know I talk about you know assume you have all those pieces in place, uh, you really have to have the orchestration and management of the recovery. Uh, whether it's locally, remotely, or trying to move things, trying to move the applications and data back and forth, that's really going to be key to the, to the you have you experiencing success. So, a um, couple observations about you know cloud-based recovery. Um, you know, as I mentioned, and you know, continue to emphasize, I, I don't see back of the cloud as a as a target as being a big obstacle. I mean, I think that's probably fairly easy to achieve, you know, it's achievable for almost any size organization. It's just when you start switching over to cloud-based recoveries that it gets much more complicated. Um, right now, based on what we're seeing, backing up to a single cloud provider probably provides the best options for achieving, you know, the goal of cloud-based recovery. I mean, I certainly understand why you may want to store data with different cloud providers for, you know, whether it's redundancy of the backup data or the other locations you want, uh, or, you know, time to access that, or even cost. Those all make sense. But if you really, I mean, if your real concern is application availability, fast recoveries, probably your best chance of achieving that is just going with a single provider, and more than likely it's going to be with a proprietary solution because I think right now they're the best position to really deliver those sort of recoveries unless you have a lot of staff in house that you can really focus on who, who have time to become experts in recovery. Um, and then even before you select a backup solution, I think, you know, and, and if cloud-based recovery is really important to you, you almost you really need to understand what you're trying to accomplish in the cloud. And then kind of back into your backup solution. I mean, don't go buying a backup solution and then you know start talking about you know how we're going to do cloud-based recovery with it. I would say figure out you know what your cloud-based what you want to accomplish in the cloud, and then back into your backup solution or backup appliance based upon those requirements. So finally, we're going to talk about having a single management council to manage all this. And what I'm seeing happening more and more, you know, among across all different providers, and I would include, you know, Unitrends is one of this is is one of these providers where they're really trying to create a consolidated, simplified management council to manage backup and recovery, whether it be physical, virtual, or cloud, uh, you know, locally, and, and to do backup and recovery, you know, locally, remotely, or in the cloud, just sort of a single pane of glass in which to manage it and orchestrate it all. Uh, this is something that, uh, you know, as organizations, you know, they continue to consolidate staff. Uh, more people are doing, you know, always ask to do more with less, and that's a trend that just never seems, can, never seems to stop. Having the single management council is becoming more and more important to actually successfully executing upon the sort of consolidated view. So, again, some of the motivating factors for having a single management council, um, you want to try to centralize the management of it, whether it's backup, recovery, anywhere, through a single council. Um, ideally, this will also give you the flexibility to deploy you know, the specific uh, address, use the right tool to address the specific backup or recovery challenge, regardless of the application type. Um, I know a number of organizations still use physical and, you know, one type for physical, another type for virtual. And I think that's going to work for it. You know, that may still work for some. But as organizations, again, as staff shrinks, organizations, you know, want to have a single council to manage everything, I really see, and we're seeing this sort of evolution where everything kind of has to go back to one council if you really want to do it effectively and execute upon it, you know, centrally with, you know, the highest probability and confidence of success with you know using the least amount of time. It also helps to you know potentially simplify licensing and management because again everything's under one console. You can go to one provider and get and get what you need. And then you also get more recovery options. Um, I mean I, I don't see a whole lot of comp, you know companies necessarily going from you know physical to 
are going from virtual to physical, but uh, companies may use these tools as a way to uh, you know, go from a uh, physical to a virtual environment and migrate applications. Or even you know, do, I'm starting to see more and more virtual to virtual where they're going from one hypervisor to another because it's more cost effective to you know, potentially run on Hyper-V than ESX. Or maybe, one, maybe it isn't running as well on Hyper-V as they thought, so they're going to move it back to uh, move it back to an ESX server. I mean, it just gives you that, that sort of flexibility uh, that you know really makes having a single management console with lots of different tools available in it. So some observations. Um, this is a, we really see this as an emerging trend. Uh, it really helps facilitate taking a best of breed approach to both physical and virtual data protection, and really start to manage you know really recoveries. You know, hopefully, it even extends into the cloud where you can manage you know phys recoveries and backup. Well, backups locally or off premise, but then actually manage recoveries whether they're uh, locally at a secondary site or even in the cloud. Um, but the cautionary note here is, you know, products are in various states of developing integrated management interfaces. So um, you really have to kind of take your time, uh, and if this is really important to your organization, really take some a little additional time and really take some look at some demos. Uh, talk to your provider, find out where they're at in bringing this all together. Um, as, you know, I mean, this is such this is such a constant state of flux right now. And there's so much going on in this space. The U.S. as an analyst term, it's really hard to just say, okay, this is exactly where any vendor's at. I mean, there there's a lot of uh, investment and dollars being put in this area, a lot of R&D being done here. So as you start getting on maybe a short list of two or three, ask them to you know, show the demos, show them what they can do. I mean, I would be more inclined to go with a product that has a better, you know, more consolidated uh, console that can do the more, you know, that can do everything centrally. Maybe get one that has a lot of features, but it's really hard to manage them. Uh, I'd be more inclined to go with the, the one that's simpler to manage and can really deliver on this functionality. So just a few final thoughts. Um, backup to the cloud, as far as using the cloud as a backup target, is a reality. But organizations really need to establish what type of recovery or recoveries they want to implement uh, before you know, selecting the, a backup solution. Uh, coming up with a single management interface to manage recoveries and backup, whether it's physical, virtual, in the cloud, are you know, rapidly maturing and gaining momentum. Uh, however, just be cautious. I mean, some of the integration that they're promising it may still be at the at the PowerPoint level. So take your time. I would really encourage you to take your time as you as you get down to your short list of products that you're looking to make sure you can provide the functionality you need, and you know both now and into the future. And really, when we start looking, you know, I talk specifically about how hybrid cloud backup appliances. Uh, DCIG continually they're really the position to assist organizations, you know, in doing recovery where they want or need to do it. Because they can do it locally, they can do it remotely, and they can even do it in the cloud. They're kind of positioned to help address all those specific needs that organizations have. So at this point, I'd like to turn over to Mike Demiglio. Um, please, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, submit them, and we'll get to them here in about 10 or 15 minutes. But I'm going to let uh, Mike take it from here. Mike? Uh, thanks, Jerome. What an excellent analysis of uh, what to consider when evaluating local or remote and and cloud-based recovery solutions, really outstanding recommendations. Really appreciate that. Over the next, say, 15 minutes or so, I'm going to show why Unitrend's appliances were awarded the best-in-class for hybrid cloud backup appliances by DCIG. And, and what I really want to do here is, is focus primarily on how Unitrend's addresses the four trends that Jerome spoke about and highlighted in his presentation. Just as a reminder, that's back up to the cloud, appliance-based recoveries, cloud-based recoveries, and, and single management or single pane of glass, what some people call single pane, pane of glass. So, so to, to take a, a, a real quick look, as Jerome spoke about, the industry has really recognized that IT staffing, and I, I know most people on the phone can probably agree with this, right? IT staffing is growing significantly slower than the data is is growing. You're growing. Your data is growing just at, a, at an enormous rate, right? And elasticity and agility are really key to recovering and, and reducing downtime, which is a key for everybody, right? We're on this this 24-hour, 365-day cycle. Everybody expects to get to their data always, always on, at least to your mission critical type type of applications. So what's happening in the industry is that there's a paradigm shift, and that paradigm shift is towards these hybrid cloud appliances that Jerome has been speaking about, right? It's a shift that unifies 
a single platform across all of your assets, whether they're physical or virtual or multiple operating systems, all types of different, different applications. A single appliance, whether it's a physical appliance or a virtual appliance, that can handle all of that, those assets, whatever they, they happen to be, as well as local and remote archive and multiple types of recovery, like things like instant recovery that Jerome spoke about and bare metal recovery and, and even integration of cloud assets for backup and replication, uh, long-term retention, business continuity, disaster recovery, uh, recovery assurance, and, and so forth, all integrated into one single management console, one single pane of glass, kind of a, kind of a big goal, right? I mean, to, to do all of those things to achieve that, that shift. So, so to look, how does, how does Unitrends deal with that, panish, that, that, that paradigm shift? What, is it, what does it look like? What we really look like is a fully integrated, cloud-empowered data protection and recovery portfolio. And I'll, and I'll go through this as we go through the presentation over the next couple minutes. But fundamentally, what it incorporates is an all-in-one physical hybrid cloud appliance. There's actually 14 models that are tuned to your specific needs that go from one terabyte up to 182 terabytes in, in capacity. Or a virtual appliance, Jerome spoke to this, right? The, in some instances, you have uh, VMware or you have Hyper-V uh, virtual appliances installed, and you have room on those appliances where you could put a VM, a backup VM on, on one of those appliances without the necessity of buying yet another piece of hardware. And we have a full virtual appliance. Are we run, and, and as I said, that runs on VMware or Hyper-V, are, are we provide fully installable software that runs on Linux machines, RHEL and, and CentOS as an example, for those enterprises, usually for big enterprises that have their own compute and, and storage hardware and resources already installed and they just need a piece of software. So this portfolio goes across all of those various platforms but yet has the same functionality, the same core base that is incorporated in the all-in-one hardware, physical appliance, virtual appliance, as well as the, the software installation. And it, it provides the same hybrid cloud function, functionality, which I'll detail real briefly in, in, in the very next slide that, that we look at. But it also includes, as you look to the bottom of this slide, tightly integrated, secure, highly available cloud assets, both public and proprietary, our proprietary Unitrends cloud. Now, we support a, a, a high, large array of public clouds, typically for backup and archive, but as Jerome pointed out, not for recovery services. Public clouds today, uh, if you try to recover on that cloud, you have, to, in, you, you have to spin up their compute assets within the cloud itself, right? Their storage is is relatively inexpensive, but in order to turn on the compute assets, it can get relatively, it can get pretty expensive, and there's no guarantee, depending on which public cloud you talk to, there's no guarantee of, a, of an SLA or a recovery time objective that is absolutely imperative for certain mission-critical applications. So that's why today, and, and I agree with Jerome, it will change as we move forward, that today, proprietary clouds are clouds that are owned by companies like ourselves. We have our own cloud assets. We don't, we don't parse that out to somebody else, and they're located all over the United States, Europe, and, and, and Asia, multiple sites, that, that provide the ability to have disaster recovery in the cloud and recovery assurance, which is even a higher, more uh, orchestrated, more automated testing type of type of solution. And what that does is it, it allows you to have very specific recovery time objectives, recovery point objectives, right? The recovery point objective is how often your backup gets replicated over to, to that site, and to meet very, very specific compliance-oriented or SLAs. And that's what our, our recovery assurance uh, does. And we'll, we'll go through that in just a little bit more detail as well. 
So the unified data protection, and I'm not going to go through all the details on, on this slide. You'll get a copy of it so you can look at it at your leisure and, and go through it. And, of course, send me an email or, or give me a phone call, and I'll be happy to discuss it in, in great detail with you. Uh, but what Unitrends enables is really a, a simple cost-effective backup and recovery archive and tightly integrated cloud inter integration solution. And, and as I said, both to the public and, and to our own private cloud for long-term retention, disaster recovery, and application-level recovery assurance. So when I talk about recovery assurance, it's the ability to spin up complex applications like e-commerce and email and, and complex databases where you have DNS servers and you have Active Directory and you have web front ends and all these, these instances that need to spin up in a specific order with a specific a recovery time objective, recovery point objective, and all need to come up with the right amount of right type of data, the right amount of data, and within a specific SLA. And that's what recovery assurance does. And again, I'll I'll, I'll speak to that in in some in some detail. But in in addition to those types of service, some of the other advanced data protection type of functionality that's shown on this chart includes heterogeneous support, the ability in a single appliance, whether it's virtual or, or physical, to support all of your physical assets, right? And I know that we're becoming more and more virtualized every day, but there are still a large amount of physical database servers, as an example, that are that are in our facilities. So we handle both those as well as the virtual assets. Literally hundreds of applications, all the way all the way down to Mac OS, and and all types of application aware type of of backup, inline deduplication, which optimizes capacity as well as uh, replication and, and WAND optimization, instant recovery for VMware Hyper-V as well as, as Windows, uh, bare metal recovery, uh, even to disk similar hardware, so it doesn't have to be the same server, and granular application backup. So what, what does that mean? That fundamentally means that when, when we back up at the hypervisor, on a hypervisor, we do it both at the host level or the hypervisor level as well as we can at the guest level as well. So most... Most virtual backup solutions only back up at the hypervisor level, and that's the majority of what everybody uses. That's fine. That works for most, most applications. But there are those mission-critical applications where you need to hit very specific recovery point objectives in order to make sure that your data is recoverable. So in those instances, you want to be able to run an agent in certain guests, not all of them, but certain guests so that you can specifically determine the recovery point and back that application up more often, maybe even as often as every 10 and 15 minutes, to ensure that you can recover to, to an exact point, while all of your other applications would can back up on a completely different schedule. That's all included in, in, in these, these solutions, that and, and much, much more. So what is a hybrid cloud recovery type of product look like, right? We've been bannering that word around here quite a bit. And, and what it is, is it's local data kept on premise or locally or in your data center. It's either a virtual appliance or a physical appliance that provides really fast recovery as well as, as local archive in that facility. And the local archive is, is important because if you – if you have a, a malicious deletion of your data, if you have a software corruption, if you have a virus that's instituted somehow, you want to be able to roll back to a known good state. You want to be able to do that very quickly, locally, if you can, and not have to, to, to bring that back from the cloud. But we also provide you the ability in it to pull that back from the cloud as well. And the Unitrends cloud provides both storage replication, and that's a replication of, of all the data that's on your, your physical appliance, as well as uh, long-term retention. And that's, that's what we call our forever cloud, and that's the ability to archive data out there in a grandfather, father, son type of, of, of management structure that 
gives you seven dailies, four weeklies, 12 monthlies, and an infinite amount of years so that you can, you can continue to retain your data and have it out there in, in the event that you have to, to roll back to a known good state, or that's also the data that we use for our disaster recovery and our recovery assurance type of solutions. And as you'll note on here, we also support uh, a number of uh, public clouds, including things like Google and Amazon and Rackspace and, and so forth. And that's used for uh, cheap backup and, and archive as, as well, but not typically the recovery assurance that that uh, both both uh, Jerome and I have been have been speaking uh, speaking about. So the hybrid cloud, as as we talked about, and as Jerome talked about, one of the added benefits that it provides is this ability to to archive, and and that takes your age data off of your local appliance, off that physical appliance your on-premise appliance, and moves it out, out to the cloud. So that, that means that you don't have to scale your local storage as often as you would. It saves you money, and it also retains that data that you need for compliance or regulatory requirements out in the cloud so that you can meet those, those HIPAA requirements or, or many other requirements that we have to, have to meet on, on a regular basis. And, and that can be stored out the, in the cloud. So it reduces your cost, it retains data for long periods of time, and it provides you the ability to meet the long-term re uh, compliance requirements. So always on recovery, one of the things that Jerome talked about is the ability to recover in the cloud. That's one of the exciting things that's occurring in the industry today is the ability to now use the cloud as your secondary site, not having to maintain your own secondary site storage and maintenance and personnel and, and hardware and, and then in all the environmentals, right, air conditioning and, and buildings and on and on and on are, are using a colo for that. So the cost of a cloud is significantly less than having to, to own and maintain your own facility. And in most instances, including ours, it's a subscription service, so it's a you know it's a monthly or it's an annual subscription that is an opex comes out of an operational budget versus a capital expense, so it saves a considerable a, a amount of money. But what what Unitrends provides in our cloud beyond just retention and storage is the ability to recover within the cloud itself. And we provide two levels, and this is all integrated and also integrated into the single pane of glass that, that Jerome talked about. The, the first level is a warm standby, and that's disaster recovery as a service, and there's been a lot of terminology out in the industry about that. But that, that provides the ability to spin up real applications in the, in the cloud in the event that you have an outage at, at your primary site. So you can pick which applications, whether they be VMware, Hyper-V, or Windows applications, and spin those up in, in the cloud. We guarantee a one-hour SLA per application uh, in, in the cloud itself. They're warm standbys. They're sitting there. The data is being updated. And, you, and if, the, if you need to, the failover, you do a failover and your, your users are VPN, secure VPN, to those, those machines. In addition to that, for those mission critical type of applications, those ones that you really need fast response, you need faster than an hour response, your e-commerce site, you're right? You can't afford to have a user come to your e-commerce site and not be able to buy something. You want that thing to instantly fail over. Recovery assurance is the guarantee that you can test, automatically test that any time that you want to through that single management console. You can assure that your RPOs and your RTOs are being met. You can provide reporting to your management, con your management team as well as your, your uh, compliance organizations that you can meet whatever SLAs are, are, are needed. And this is just a real brief view of what that recovery assurance uh, screen looks like. It just gives you a, a quick look 
at all of the applications that are ongoing out there. And, and it's a risk assessment, real quick risk assessment for your users to say, hey, is this working or is it not working, right? And and that's that's built in into the, in the console some subsystems. So what do we provide at the cloud level? We Unitrends integrated into our hybrid cloud architecture, whether it's a physical appliance or a virtual appliance, are are our cloud resources as well. So it's it's three levels. It's cold, which is a backup or long term retention, and that's storage, right? It's just like what a public cloud is. So it can be the Unitrends cloud or it could be a public cloud and they're both managed by the by a single pane of glass. It's warm, which is a disaster recovery as a service, where we have staff on site 24, 365 that help manage that process and spin those applications up on the warm standby servers. Or it's a hot standby where we, where you automatically fail over, push button fail over to uh, VMware, Hyper-V, our Windows applications that are tested, certified, and guaranteed they're tested in a, in a sandbox outside of the production so that you know your, your backups work, that if you need them, it's automatically going to be there. For mission-critical applications, it's, it's absolutely critical, and it's the only one in the industry that does Hyper-V, Windows, and, and VMware, and automatically will, will fail over in, in the event that, that you need them. So we, we provide all those levels, and you can mix and match whatever you want uh, on the cloud as, as you need to, to meet your application needs. So, the, so really, why does oh, – this, 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 this give a real brief look at the management console. This is what Jerome spoke about, single management console that manages everything from protect, protection, job creation, recovery, cloud, archive, everything. This is actually the, the top dashboard. You can get a quick look at everything that's going on, and you manage everything from this single, single dashboard. And again, you'll be able to see that in the presentation when it's provided to you. So why, why best in class? Why did we win best in class from DCIG? Because we provide the trends that that Jerome talked about. We back up to the cloud. We provide appliance-based recoveries. Those recoveries, by the way, can be done directly on our appliance. We provide a wide array of cloud-based recoveries, and it's all managed through a, through, through a single pane of, pane of glass. This next screen, I, I definitely am not going to go through this, but this is just a review of the various appliances, physical appliances that we have. These are finely tuned, integrated, pre-installed software with the compute resources, memory, and, and storage all in a single box that send out. It's very easy to install. It's a plug and play right onto your network and you're up and, up and operational. Again, you can review this at, at your leisure. And for those folks that aren't aware of, of Unitrends, let me just kind of give you a brief overview, right? Real briefly here, as you've seen in the short presentation that I've given you, and it's been, I've kind of blown through it pretty, pretty quickly here, but Unitrends, we're really here to offer a radically simple cloud-empowered, all-in-one continuity solution. And that continuity solution incorporates local and, and remote with our primary goal really to build confidence that you always know your data is protected, that you can always recover that data when you, when you need to, that you can do it easily, and it, no matter what, what the outage is, whether it's a, just a file failure or a server failure or an entire site failure, you'll be able to get back to, to, to what you need to get back to. So we, we've been in, in the industry since 1989. We've been around. We have over 14,000 customers. And again, I'll, I'll leave this to your leisure to, to take a look at so that we have a few minutes here for our, our Q&A. I encourage you to look at this slide and come to our website. Uh, there's Unitrends free. There's, it's actually a terabyte of storage that you're provided unlimited VMs that you can you can use within your shop as long as you want to use it and test test our software use it understand it see it see the interface 
get comfortable with it, download it. It doesn't doesn't cost anything. Runs on on a virtual machine. And with that, I'll I'll turn it over to the Q and A. I encourage you to download the DCIG Hybrid Cloud Appliance Guide. It will go through all of this. All the 60 appliances that Jerome spoke about are in that guide. So my, all of my comp competitions in that guide, including all of our appliances. You can look at it in great detail. You can download it from our site, or you can download it from the DCIG site. With that, Michael, I'll turn it over for Q&A. All right. Thank you so much. That's Mike DiMeglio of Unitrends. Uh, we do have a couple of minutes for questions. Uh, as I mentioned, if you don't, uh, if you haven't gotten your questions in yet, you can still send them in. If we don't get to them live, you can respond. We will respond to them via email. And if you're listening to this on demand, you can also send in your questions, and we will respond via email. So the first question uh, looks like it's for Jerome. Um, can you provide some guidelines for sizing a backup appliance for my environment? Sure. Thanks, Michael. Um, yeah. So again, there's no like hard and fast rule to, to sizing any appliance. Uh, one of the probably probably the best advice I've you know that I've heard from those who are who are doing this is to roughly estimate the size the amount of data you're backing up uh, in your environment right now, and uh, and that that's a pretty good estimate of about how much data you're going to need when you start factoring in, and that's assuming the data. Is going to be deduplicated, you know, such as what you know, some of the a lot of the appliances we're talking about. I think I think it's 100% support for deduplication. So again, if you're backing up 10 terabytes of data, uh, you want to at least you know have at least 10 terabytes of capacity on the appliance uh, to to store the data. Now, I mean, I again, that's probably uh, a little on the conservative side, especially if you're looking to do appliance, you know, any sort of a recoveries on the appliance. Uh, so maybe again, maybe add you know, at least 20, maybe 50% of that. So if you need to, so again, if you're backing up 10 terabytes of data, you probably want to at least have at least 10 terabytes of capacity on your appliance, um, allowing some for um, uh, some for recoveries. And then also, you know, and it's also helped because a lot of, you know, as the data ages, uh, that it can be also migrated off, you know, stored with the, the, uh, the cloud provider as well. Uh, Mike, uh, Mike DeBiglo, do you have any, uh, do you have any experience on that or do you have any thoughts on that topic? No, no, Jerome. I mean, well, well said. Exactly. Most of the vendors will have calculators that will help uh, help the customers determine what the best size is. Uh, but you know, the, gen the the kind of the the general coin type of of feel is look at all your backup size uh, and you know multiply that by one and a half, and you'll probably be pretty close, right, to to what you need as long as you have some type of archive capability that's going to give you room to 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 uh, have some type of retention for some period of time. So if you need longer retention, if you don't have archive and you retain you need to retain your your backups, then you need to multiply the backup size by the number of days that you're going to retain you're going to have retention based on the change rate. So it, it gets a little complicated, but the but all of the all of the vendors have calculators and they'll help you with that. Does that make sense? All right, thank you so much. Uh, let's. I think we have time for one more question, really quick, and this is from Mike. What's the benefit of using a hybrid cloud appliance versus simply using backup as a service in the cloud? Yeah, it's a great. I mean, that, that's actually a really good question, and it's, it's poignant to our, our our presentation today, right? Um, you know, if you're really a small shop and don't have very much data, yeah, you can likely get away with going direct to uh, a cloud service, a public cloud service like Amazon or, or Google or, or, or what have you. But there's a, there, there's a lot of benefit in having a, a, a local appliance, a, you know, a hybrid cloud type of appliance as we've talked about here today. And, and, and to boil it down kind of into a nutshell, one, you want the ability to be able to recover quickly. If you just have a file or you lose a data, a piece of data, or even if you lose a server, you want to be able to recover that locally because it takes quite a bit of time. It doesn't take much time to move the data to the cloud, but to get the data back, it can be weeks depending on the size of, of, of that data set across, the, across whatever your WAN link is, right? If you just have a T1, which is – Typical for SMB type of, of company, unless you go to an OC3 or something, it's it's going to take a significant amount of time to get that data back. So you want to be able to, to recover locally if you can. Additionally, that 
that hybrid cloud appliance is going to provide some functionality to move that data to the cloud much, much more efficiently. Having global level deduplication that deduplicates across all the data that you, you have in your servers in, within the data center itself, and then moving that across the, the WAN is going to, is going to optimize the, the data set that's going to the WAN. So it's only going to send change data, if you will, if you will, using deduplication. So you're going to reduce the amount of data across the WAN. Secondly, you want the ability to encrypt that data across the WAN because a wide area network is basically the Ethernet, and it's wide open space, and anybody can get to that data in flight. So you want that data in flight to be encrypted. You also want the ability, when it's sitting on that cloud out there, to be encrypted as well, because the cloud is a multi-user site typically, right? So you want multi-tenancy ability on the cloud, and you want encryption at rest on, on the cloud. So that hybrid cloud is going, is going to provide encryption, deduplication, local recovery very, very quickly, and it's going to provide that single management source to manage everything that's, that's in your entire infrastructure. So it, there's a lot of benefit of having having an appliance, and particularly since the cost of these appliances have, have dropped significantly, it makes a lot of sense to, to manage both both sides of the coin. All right. Well, thank you so much. That is all the time that we have. So I, as I mentioned, if you have any questions that you got sent in that we haven't responded to yet, we'll respond to via email. I hope you've enjoyed today's webcast presentation. If you'd like to refer a friend or you'd like to watch it again for a review, um, it will be archived and available on demand within about 48 hours from now. If you'd like more information about Unitrans, if you'd like to download today's slides, you can use the related resources widget, which is just to the right of your viewing console. So with that, I'm going to thank our sponsor, Unitrans, and I'll thank Jerome Wendt and Mike Demiglio for sharing their time and expertise with us today. My name is Michael Steinhardt for CBS Interactive, and I hope you have a great day.